In this lecture, we'll talk about li what linear combinations are and how they relate to something called vector equations. So if you have some number of vectors in Rn, so that just means that these are column vectors with n entries, and the subscript p here just means how many of these that we have. So v1, v2, all the way up through vp. We might only have one vector, we might have a whole bunch of vectors. So however many vectors we have, that's what that letter p stands for. A linear combination of those vectors is simply a sum of scalars times those vectors. So c1 is a scalar multiplied by the vector v1, that scalar multiplication there, c2 times v2, all the way up through cp times vp. We take all those scalar multiplication results and add them all together. That's what we call a linear combination. So for example, if we have two vectors in R3, so these vectors have three entries, so they are in R3. Then we can take any two scalars, one for u and one for v, multiply the first scalar by u, the second scalar by v, and add together the results. So one example, one of the many, many, many ways there, there are to do that is to take two times u plus three times v. So when we take two times u, that's two times the vector zero, negative three, five, plus three times v, that's three times the vector one, four, seven. And when we do those multiplications and add them together the results, we get the vector two, six, 31. So that means that two, six, 31 is a linear combination of u and v. And some vectors will be linear combinations of u and v in general, and some vectors won't be linear combinations of u and v. Just as another example, here we have three vectors that are all in R2. So these vectors all have two entries, so they're in R2. And so that means that we need three scalars because there's three vectors, one for each scalar. Now, just to emphasize here, the scalars can be any real number. A scalar is allowed to be zero and the, they don't have to be whole numbers either. So in this case, one of our scalars is one half. But again, we take the first scalar times the first vector plus the second scalar times the second vector plus the third vector, the scalar times the third vector, do all those products, add together the results. And so in this case, we end up with a vector negative three, four. And this calculation just shows that negative three, four is one of the many possible linear combinations of P, Q, and R. So in general, given some vectors, some number of vectors in Rn, and some other vector in Rn, we can ask the question of whether that vector b is or is not a linear combination of the v's. So that's a yes or no question, and it's just the same as asking whether the vector equation has a solution. So what we would be looking for is p scalars, one scalar for each vector, and we'd be looking to see is there a way to find one scalar for each vector so that when I multiply the first scalar by the first vector and the second scalar by the second vector and so on, do all those products, add together the results, is there some way to do that so that the result turns out to be the vector b? And again, that's a yes or no question. So let's do an example to see what this might look like. So let's say that we have two vectors. Again, we're in R3, but we could be in have any number of entries here. So v1 is the vector 1, negative 2, negative 5 v2 is the vector 2, 5, 6, and b is the vector 7, 4, negative 3. And so the question is, again, is b a linear combination of v1 and v2? Are there two scalars, one for each of the v's, so that the first scalar times the first vector plus the second scalar times the second vector turns out to equal b? So the variables in this equation are the x1 and the x2. Those are the things that we're looking for v1, v2, and b, those are given vectors. Those, those are things that we know, and x1 and x2, that's what we're trying to solve for. So when we write out this vector equation, it looks like this. So all I've done here is I've put in what v1, v2, and b are in their actual vector form. Now let's actually do this multiplication. When I multiply x1 by the vector 1, negative 2, 5, what I get is 1 times x1, negative 2 times x1, negative 5 times x1. Remember that when we do scalar multiplication, all we do is take that scalar and multiply it by everything in the vector. Similarly, when I take x2 times the vector v2, I get 2 times x2, 5 times x2, and 6 times x2. And again, this is being set equal to b, which is 7, 4, negative 3. Now, when I add those two vectors together, what I end up with is x1, plus 2x2, negative x2, sorry, negative 2x1, plus 5x2, 
and negative 5x1 plus 6x2. And the question is whether we can do this in such a way to make this work out to be 7 for negative 3. Well, how would it be that that vector on the left, x1 plus 2x2, negative 2x1 plus 5x2, negative 5x1 plus 6x2, how would it be that that vector equals 7, 4, negative 3? Well, for those two vectors to be equal, all of the entries in the left-hand vector would have to equal all of the corresponding entries in the right-hand vector. So that would mean that x1 plus 2x2 would have to equal 7, and negative 2x1 plus 5x2 would have to equal 4, and negative 5x1 plus 6x2 would have to equal negative 3. But that's a system of linear equations. That's three equations with two variables. And again, the question is, does this have a solution? And we know how to answer this question. We know how to answer it when we're talking about a system of linear equations. The way that we answer that question is by setting up an augmented matrix. The augmented matrix has the coefficients from the equation in the first columns, and then the last column are, is the number that's, numbers that's on the other side of the equal sign. And notice that when we do that, the first column of this matrix is just the vector that we called v1, and the second column of this matrix is simply the vector that we called v2, and this third column is simply the vector b. So how do we use this augmented matrix to answer this question, to solve this system of equations? Well, we use row reduction. That's what we've been talking about. So when we row reduce this matrix, I'll save you the trouble. I did this for you. Uh, what we end up with is this row reduced echelon form. And notice that since the last column has no pivot, that means there is a solution. The corresponding system of equations is consistent. And in fact, because we're in reduced echelon form and we have no free variables, we can say exactly what that solution would be. It's x1 equals 3 and x2 equals 2. But again, if the question is, is there a solution or isn't there a solution, remember that we talked about once you have the echelon form, all you have to do is look to see if there's a pivot in the last column. In this case, there's not, so that means that there is a solution. And in this case, we happen to know more. We happen to be able to find the exact solution. So we have two seemingly different questions, but we answer them in the same way. When we ask to know whether a vector equation, where the variables are the scalar coefficients, if we want to know whether that vector equation has a solution, we can equivalently set up a system of linear equations where the augmented matrix has columns that look like v1 through vp, and then the last column being the, the vector b. And we know how to do this second run. So we know how to solve a system of linear equations using row reduction on the augmented matrix. And so that allows us to use that knowledge to answer the first question. And we'll talk about what this all means and why we care about linear combinations when we start talking about span in the next lecture.